So again, for all of you who also joined our daily meeting today, um, welcome to this little presentation on our Mounting Monday here together with Link80. Today we like, or I like to talk with you about the theme that is called choosing a wheelchair mount for communication devices. So it's going to be more or less an introduction about our kind of view about how I look um, on uh, the, the, the theme of mounting of, for AAC devices and um, should give you a general overview about how you can choose um, and right wheelchair mount model uh, in that huge jungle of uh, options that are available right now. Um, yeah, for all of you that haven't attended the last week's or the week before uh, Mounting Monday, I would like to start with a little introduction about myself. So my name is Robert Coles. I'm occupational therapist and um, the sales manager from the company Red Hat of Engineering um, and have um, worked for more than five years as a consultant for a German company in the field of assistive technology. And um, yeah, this kind of experience is something that I can use uh, in this daily work together with um, people with AAC devices. And um, I would like to introduce you today in this very important theme. Now, today's theme is choosing a wheelchair mount for communication devices. And I think that's the reason why you all here, you want to see and I want to introduce you about my way about how I think or how our company is thinking, how we can use or how we can find a solution for the main problem, how to get the communication system attached to the wheelchair in the best possible and the most stable way um, that is available for your AAC devices. And when we are looking into the way of uh, AAC devices about how they can getting used and when we are doing some research and we're going to Google and Googling uh, assistive technology, assistive communication, we always see people um, sitting in their wheelchairs, laying in a bed or they, they, they're using actively a communication device and it is more or less the way about how we also communicate always and everywhere. So uh, I think and communication systems must be definitely available as much as possible in the best economic way for a customer without a risk for them that they lose their voice again. Um, but on the other hand, when it comes to the theme of mounting, people getting very, 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 very creative and they are thinking about solution, um, how they can transport that device uh, best stable way, for example, which can be sometimes a little bit um, difficult when you think about your customers with cerebral palsy or ALS or red syndrome, for example. And also the situation of a customer is changing over the years when you, we all start mostly when we're working with kids in a very 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 early stage with them and also their situation um, for example this is a little case that i found um in, in uh, on a, on a web page from a family that showed up their their uh, examples about how fast their wheelchairs are changing um which i think that is important to understand <laughs> Oh, sorry, which is from my point of view important to understand because um, when you are looking on your customer side and when they're using an AAC device and their wheelchair is changing after one or two or three years, you want to make sure that the communication device is then also available. So not that somebody is taking the old wheelchair, taking the old wheelchair away and is um, just forgetting to think about the, the, the mounting solution for their assistive technology device. So you can see this is an, and just only a short time period of about 10 years. And as you can see here on that examples, the wheelchair is changing over 10 times, uh, no, about, sorry, um, is changing about four times in about 10 years, which is a very, very, very short time, um, time uh, line. So what are the conditions to a wheelchair mount that we need to think about or that we need to guarantee? 
a wheelchair mount must always be extremely stable because it doesn't matter if it is only a light device or it is a heavy assistive technology device. It must be positioned very, very, very stable because most of the time our customers cannot hold the communication devices in the right spot. It must be extremely flexible because the situation can change. When we're having a customer with ALS or with Red syndrome, they're just going downstairs in, uh, in their chair or in a bed and um, then you want to make sure that the mount can be extremely easy adjusted. It must be intuitive because otherwise when you are having your customer who is sitting in a chair and you want to take him out of the chair, um, you want only you, you, you must see how the, um, how the mechanical things work to getting easy in and out of the chair. And it must also be very, very, very universal because otherwise when your customer is moving from a chair, from one wheelchair to another wheelchair or to um, maybe a standing device, we need to find a very, very easy way to take the communication device away from that one wheelchair and install it on the other chair, otherwise he will be again speechless in that situation. And it should be um, as best as possible economic. When you having a customer who is sitting in, a chair, in one wheelchair and as you can see in that previous um, four time story from that one customer that changed his wheelchair. Uh, you don't want to buy all the time when the customer is moving from one chair to another newer chair. You don't want to buy um, the complete mounting solution completely new because that is just only not, yeah, that's extremely ex expensive and uh, uneconomic. And it must be and should be extremely light because when you are having an, an assistive technology device with a weight of let's say 500 gram like an iPad and then you're having a huge and bulky and heavy mounting solution that is could be yeah for for the for the assistance very very difficult and it should also be very very nice to look at because you all know um, when you're seeing something that looks good we always like it more and that is also the same for our customers so this is not how a mounting solution or the, how the right mounting solution for communication devices should look like because um, that would be uh, very difficult for the customer. This is how I think we can mount communication devices. So we at Rare Adapt working with a multi-component system that gives us or gives your customers the chance to position their communication devices exactly in the way how I described it to you. Safe. Uh, economic, flexible, universal for customers. Um, the mounting of AAC devices on a wheelchair is always something that fills a gap between the wheelchair and the communication devices and that in the best possible way without distracting the customer and also the functionalities from the wheelchair. So every wheelchair is a little bit different. So as you can see in the background here, this is a typical standard wheelchair that has only a few functionalities that we need to pay attention for. It's stuff like the brakes or the footrests, for example, they must be available and flexible, useful also after installing um, the mount for the communication devices. But also some other wheelchairs, they used to have standing functionalities, they have seating, tilting functionalities, the backrests are movable, for example. And um, as soon as we pay enough attention on all of that functionalities of a wheelchair, we can also find a way to install all these kind of mounting components to a wheelchair without destructing these kind of functionalities. And also when we are moving the wheelchair and when the customer is using the chair in their daily routines, um, the communication device must always follow as much as, uh, as of these options, for example. So as you can see here, this is a typical standard scenario how we think you can um, mount an AAC device and tablet-based device um, here to a wheelchair with most of the time three tubes that giving us the length between a an, an, an connection point on the wheelchair and up to a position where the communication system must be. And these three lines, these three tubes are connected with a couple of joints that holding everything stable enough together. 
So the goal for today is to giving you an overview about what is possible and what are the differences and also what are the things that you need to think about when you think about mounting AAC devices. Because I tried to, to break down the entire possibilities of wheelchair mounting options into one, two, three, four, five main categories. So um, one category can be, we are thinking about a typical standard mount. Um, the second category is about eye control mounts. The third is about fold down mounts, short mounts and curve mounts. So these are the five main categories that are available to mount AAC devices. But when you taking our catalog and when you're taking a quick look in the catalog, then you will see a couple of these categories and a couple of these different models. Some look silver, some look black, but what are the differences? Um, so, and when people see that, they are like, oh my God, oh my God. So mounting is something that is so difficult. And so I mean, you, there, there is some magic in it. So please keep in mind, there is nothing magical about mounting on a wheelchair. You only need to understand what are the differences. So let's start with an understanding of the differences. And I would like to start with the beginning in terms of the load capacity. So when we are thinking, okay, when we are looking on that main categories of our products, you see that there is one category that is called L3D and the L at the beginning is showing you it is for light devices. So light devices means the L3D category is for devices up to 1.25 kilograms. The H stands for hybrid mounts, 3D for three-dimensional movability. These H3D mounts are in the mid-class range up to 1.8 kilogram. And the M3D is for all that mid-class, a little bit more weight, three-dimensional movable options up to three kilogram. And for all of those that want to handle a little bit more weight, we have that HD heavy duty category for um, all of these heavier devices like eye gaze systems. Um, so this is only a typical point of view about how heavy an mount an, an AAC device could be. But what are these AAC devices that we can maybe use in combination with that stuff? And I tried to, for, for all of you that working daily with all of these AAC devices. I think all of you have seen switches and know how to use switches. So switches are something very, very light. So we can use them in combination with an L3D system. Stuff like beginning AAC tools, like in step-by-step. -step. Um, also all these light stuff like smartphones, tablets. All of these tools are something that you can mount in combination only from a load capacity point of view with an L3D. The hybrid categories are perfectly for all of these stuff like indies, um, touch-based devices like, like iPad devices as well. And also for when you're looking for economic ways for light eye gaze systems like um, this is for example the iris bond duo combination but also um, there is an option in combination with an iMobile or iMobile plus the m3d is more for that um, yeah where we have a little bit more of load like for the grid pads for the xn devices like the um, the jive devices so for all of these kind of touch-based devices scanning devices and the HD is more for the really more heavier devices like eye gaze devices, like the, the, the Toby i13, i16, um, the grid pads with eye gaze from iTech, the, the, the eye gaze systems, human electronic, um, the, um, the, the eye gaze systems. So I think this is more or less a general overview about, okay, when you see an, an, an uh, and an accent 1000, 1400, and you think about an, an touch based or a scanning user, um, you can classify it, okay, it is more, it's going more in that M3D product category. But also, every customer and every 
yeah, customer situation can be also an influ or can have an influence in choosing the right mounting solution because every customer is very, very, very different. Some of them using a touch-based device. And touch-based device, as you can see, when you are using your smartphone, we need to have our smartphone in a position that is very close to us. Otherwise, we, we cannot see what is there. And also in combination with a tablet, we mostly need the tablet very, very close. That can also mean we need something short to mount it on a wheelchair. When we are th thinking about a customer with switch mountings, um, some switch devices must be positioned in a spot that is sometimes a little bit higher because our customers can also be in a wheelchair, maybe in comfy chair, with a very comfortable position where they can access their switches good enough and where also the communication device is positioned in a good spot. Also there, we sometimes need to have a combination because also the switches must be positioned in a spot where our customers can access them good enough. There is also the access method mouse control and also there we have different kind of mouse controlling systems. Is there someone that is using a trackball like in that example here about the feeds? Then we must find a position they're on a very, very low position, but it could also be in joystick. Um, it could also be in trackball. It could also be something like the Kuazono mouse with a head movement. Um, but also then the communication system must be positioned in a position where the customer can see it. And also eye gaze systems, you all know eye gaze systems must be positioned 60 centimeters away from your face. Sometimes you have a very, very active customer that has a good head control where you can position the device on a low position, but sometimes you need to have a very high position. So also there, you need to fill the gap between the communication system and your wheelchair. And that could mean it could be a short mount, but it can also mean you will need a long mount for these kind of customer. And also the differences in our customers uh, in their activity level can be very, very different. So a customer with ALS will have extremely less movement. Um, someone with, with, multi, um, uh, with, uh, with paraplegia or with SMA can also have a very, very um, low activity level. And on the other hand, when we are having a customer with um, hypertonic paralyzed situation or with cerebral palsy, they are extremely active. When you're seeing them sitting in a wheelchair and they are excited, they're moving a lot. They, 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 when they want to access their touch-based device with their fingers, there is a lot of force, a lot of power that is, that, that is going onto the communication system and also on the wheelchair and also on the wheelchair mount. So we need something very stable so hypotonic paralyzed versus hypertonic paralyzed so I have a little question to all of you that have seen the presentation until right now so when we are um, seeing a customer and he is having an iPad and let's say we have two examples we have some customer with SMA so some hypotonic paralyzed situation and we have a customer with cerebral palsy so now the question to you, what do you think is the mounting solution for an iPad for someone with SMA or with hypotonic paralyzation? A little question to you, write it into the chat. What do you think, what is your first ID? What kind of mount from that four different types, L3D, H3D, M3D or heavy duty? What do you think is the right solution for someone with low power with hypertonic paralyzation. Write it into the chat. I would be extremely interested. What is your idea? And also, after that, what do you think, what could be a good solution for someone with cerebral palsy, with a lot of uncontrolled movement, with a lot of um, with a lot of force, with a lot of power in their, in their access of an iPad. So Karen is saying SMA L3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be an idea. L3D for hypotonic, H3D for height. Yeah, okay, for hypotonic. Exactly. So it is 
exactly the same communication device, but for someone with low power, we can use something light. When we are talking about someone with an extremely, with, with a lot of power, then we need something a little bit more stable. It could be that we go into the hybrid category, but it is also possible that we are going into something more stable. So the same device, but every customer used to have different needs. So you need to see every customer very, very, very individual. That could mean when you're looking for a standard solution for someone with hypotonic situation, with SMA or with cerebral palsy, you have three different categories that you where you can choose the right tool for your customer. Something light with three tubes, something in the hybrid category with three tubes, or something more stable with three tubes. So these three tubes giving us the opportunity to position the device a little bit more far away with the first tube, giving him the right height with the second tube, and then the right angle with the third tube. The eye gaze systems, the eye control mounts, for example, also these mounts, they used to have the same configuration with three tubes with um, different kind of loading capacities. The, there it is, um, for example, available an H3D mount. As you can see here, the H3D mount used to have a very, very long first tube to give you the right distance between the wheelchair and also the components. Um, with this combination of that um, a little bit lighter L3D tubes as a second and a third tube. But also here on the right side, the M3D eye control and the HD. They are extremely longer and more stable with the double tube construction. Also, there is a category available with fold down mounts. So the fold down mounts, I know that a lot of people like these folding functionalities. Um, and also you can see here in my video, they consist out of one tube here at the beginning, one vertical tube in the middle and one folding option so the customer can fold the mount upstairs and forward to get in and out of the chair very, very easy. Um, so also this is an option that is available only here in the M3D category at the moment. So there is a question from Karen. All of your mount pictures look like they are on the left-hand side. Wouldn't they all go on the right side? Oh, Karen has watched my last week's presentation, so definitely. Um, we, as long as we can mount everything on the right side, it is recommended to mount stuff on the right side. But uh, if there is a need to mount something on the left side, um, there are some components that you can additionally um, combine with our ready mounting bundles um, to, to, to mount something with the rotation lock on the left side. And also, at the moment, we are in the process of MDR, um, so the new medical device uh, law will also have an influence into our existing bundles to make them a little bit more stable. So Fiona, why is that? I missed last week. So there is something very, very easy to explain why the mounts should always be installed on the right side. So Fiona, as soon as you want to, to tighten up a bolt in a joint, you always have a right side rotation where something gets more tighter and where the friction in one of our components um, is getting higher. And when you rotating a bolt into um, the left direction and um, you open the joint. So maybe you have heard about the righty tidy lefty Lucy um, little rule and also this has an influence into um, our components. So when we are putting some weight on it like an like with a heavy device um, and the customer is, is, is going outside and is driving on a horrible road, um, the weight of the communication device and also the weight of the mounting components will, um, will move a little bit. And also that movement and that gravity influence will always move us downwards. And um, when we are mounting our components in a way like the weight goes with the self um, tightening direction, we will always have a little bit more stability. 
But um, Fiona, uh, if you want to see that again, just watch our presentation from last week if you want to on YouTube, and uh, there you will also find some a little bit more instructions about that. Okay, so short mount options. Stuff like for switches, for iPads, for smartphones, as you can see it here on the back side. Let me fold that away and take that also here away. So fold down uh, short mount options are also available only with one tube or with two tubes. I hope you can see it here on my little video. So this is, for example, and only the, the mounting solution for a very, very um, light device, like, for example, for a smartphone. And sometimes customers don't need that extremely long and uh, an extremely long and stable solution, like when they want to use a tool like a touch base device on a walker or on a stroller. And when you're having a, a good attaching point um, that gives you the, the, the ability to reduce components, um, then you can also reduce the components down to maybe let's say two tubes or even only one tube when it is um, when there is a need only maybe just for a switch or for an and body button or for a little step-by-step -step that is positioned here directly next to the armrest of the wheelchair. So it is always a question about how much distance you need to fill um, between your customer and his communication device. So there is also the L3D for one or two tubes as a an, as an solution and also the M3Ds are also available only in two tubes as a configuration. And with two tubes, as you can see here, um, the benefits are you having the swivel joint um, and only the frame clamp that are the components that will remain at the wheelchair when you remove everything away. So it makes also the solution very, very, very short and very, very economic for the customer. And also, um, you all know that problem of transportation when you want to transport the wheelchair between school and, for example, the place where the customer is living and the bus driver will need to take the customer in his wheelchair in the bus. So they try to take the communication system most of the time away then from the wheelchair. So um, a two tube solution will always be something that makes in, um, the, 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 the process of taking the mount away from the wheelchair very easy. And also the last option could be some curved mount solutions because um, when we want to use, for example, an eye gaze device, um, we want to have it very, very much far away. Um, but also some customers, as you can see here on that middle example, on that picture here in the middle, they used to have some lab trays that are installed to the wheelchairs. And a lab tray is wonderful for the customer when they need that um, that surface um, on their wheelchair to have a good positioning for their hands or when they want to handle some stuff. But it makes the, the, the installation for a mounting solution sometimes very, very, very difficult. Um, and as you can see here in that little example here on this wheelchair, oops, you can see it here. This is an example of a wheelchair with that installation. I hope you can see it here. We see that we're having here a very, very um, small base here on that wheelchair. We used to have that nice curved um, um, positioning of that device. So the, the tube goes a little bit upstairs, then forward. So you have enough space between your lab tray and your customer, and then it moves it upwards. And there is also an additional horizontal tube um, that will position then the communication device in the right spot. And also these kind of curved tube configurations are available in different lengths uh, and in different sizes. So there is an M, L and XL um, pre-configured um, bundle available with a rotation lock functionality. And the nice thing is you can open that quick shift lever here can swing them, um, the curved mount away to the side when the customer needs to go in and out. And you can easily take um, the entire mount away and then only the swivel joint and the frame clamp remains at the wheelchair of your customer. Um, 
so for all of you who attended the last week's um, Mounting Mondays, I think you all know that there are these um, important 5W questions. And as soon as you asking yourself um, these five questions, who will use the communication system? What kind of communication system will be used? And we have seen today there are some kind of views about the load capacity, the different kind of activity levels, where will the customer use his devices, when in how many different situations, how long will they use the, the systems there, and also why, so how important it is for them to communicate in all of these different environments where they are. So as soon as you are starting to ask yourself these five questions, I think you are on a good way, and if you are thinking then about, okay, so what was the the load capacity for a light device. So um, for maybe it was, ah, okay, all right, it was 1.25 kilogram that we can use in maximum for these L3D stuff. And you know your user is very, very active, so you want to make sure that the system is very stable there, then you maybe choose something a little bit more stable. Um, I think this could be a good guideline for you um, to choose the right mounting solution for a communication system. Sometimes there are some special requirements that are needed. So uh, I told you previously, stuff like the bus transport can make um, the handling and the daily use of an AAC device sometimes a little bit difficult. Um, because when the bus driver wants to, to take the mount away from the wheelchair, some, come, some of the bus drivers come to wonderful ideas. So they're taking some Allen keys, they're just opening every component and removing everything from the wheelchair. And then your customer comes to the school on the next day and everything looks completely different than to the previous day. Um, so this is something that is not really recommended to do to open all of these components and dismantle everything every day. So, um, I think for all of you that have seen the base coupler, um, um, it, it is sometimes then a very, very nice idea to take all of the components very fast and easy away from the wheelchair. Um, for all of you that haven't seen the base coupler, um, let me show you the base coupler as a solution. So, so you can see me now. Yeah, still red. So the base coupler is only a component that you put between um, the frame clamp and also the entire mount. The base coupler used to have a red quick shift lever and a little safety pin that connects. Um, the frame clamp and the complete wheelchair mount to the wheelchair. And as soon as you open the base coupler, you can remove everything completely away. So the first tube is away, the vertical tube is away, and also the horizontal tube is away. And it is a magnetic connection system. Also to connect it after that, very easy and fast back again to the wheelchair. So as soon as the bus driver wants to remove all the components, they only open the red quick shift lever and the safety pin, taking everything away. And after the transport, they can add it again back to the wheelchair without opening a single bolt or a quick shift lever or without adjusting anything of um, your mounting construction. And this is something, especially for eye gaze devices, when you have that double tubes here on the beginning, um, that is something very, very good for, for the customers. Um, pay enough attention on that wheelchair specifications. So what kind of wheelchair is it that your customer is using? Is it only a standard wheelchair without any tilting functionality? Then it is easier, for example, than a wheelchair with a tilting functionality. Is it allowed for you to mount all these kind of components to a wheelchair. Some wheelchair manufacturers use um, very, very sensitive components like carbon um, that could break um, as soon as you install any clamping construction. Is there a seat belt attachment that is important for the transport? Is it a foldable chair? 
um, is um, maybe when you're having in stroller or in walker, is that um, that stroller or walker folded together? Um, how much every day? Um, this is something that you need to ask your customer. Is the wheelchair stable enough to hold the communication device and also the mount? Think about the situation. Your customer is sitting in the chair and he's using an eye gaze system uh, on a position that is very much far away. And you take the customer out of the chair, will the wheelchair then tip over to one side or will he be stable enough to stand there? Um, find a spot where the communication device will not um, will not yeah have an, an higher influence in the tipping over risk of the wheelchair. Um, is the wheelchair height adjustable? Is there a standing functionality? Um, when, you're, when your customer is using a wheelchair with a standing functionality, um, use the standing functionality moving into the standing point and also in the seating point. And please look what kind of components move that standing functionality. Because otherwise, when you install all of these components nicely, um, when the customer is seating, then everything's fine. But as soon as the customer is standing up, maybe then when the components move, also your mounting solution will move downwards. Um, is the backrest or the seat tilting functionality important and relevant for your customer? Move the wheelchair in that direction and please have a look on, on, on the movable components because when you want to install the mount to the wheelchair only in the easiest way and then your customer is moving in his chair, um, then maybe the communication system will move out of a position where the customer can access his device. Is there a lap tray? This is important. Do the brakes on your wheelchair still working after you have installed all of your components? That is important because otherwise the wheelchair can move away and can roll away. Are there some stuff like the footrests? Are they able to be moved or even not? That can also limit your customer in getting easy in and out of your wheelchair. So you see, please have a quick look on all of these questions. And uh, I think then it's going to be extremely easy for you to choose the right mounting solution and install it also there. Um, for all of you that want to learn more about how to mount something, um, how, how to mount um, Red Hat Adapt components to wheelchairs, um, I think last week for all of you who are watching our Facebook page or following our LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn uh, page, you will maybe have seen that we are starting from last week on a new video series that is called Mounting Made Easy, which was also the theme on our first presentation here on the man, uh, on the Mounting Mondays. Um, and I would like to show you only short um, the little clip here about the Mounting Made Easy series now. Hi and welcome to today's episode of Mounting Made Easy. Go. As you can see, it also can make fun to work with um, a mounting solution like this um, or like with ours. And um, if you like to learn more about the possibilities, about assembling a frame clamp, uh, installing and, and, and a different kind of a mounting solution, you will learn on that mounting made easy videos, uh, everything about installing the frame clamps right, installing a mounting solution right to your wheelchair, um, yeah, all of these things you can see on that Mounting Made Easy videos. So um, I think that was enough about talking about how to choose them. Um, I hope I could transport you a little bit of an idea what could be the right 
um, mounting solution for an assistive device. And um, as soon as you don't find the right solution for your customer, um, one thing that we are doing is um, what we are giving you as tools are the VMS service, which is an and free um, service to do um, the practical ins uh, uh, to 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 see what is the best solution for a customer. So there is an app available in the App Store and in the Google Play Store. Um, if you want to see solutions, how they work, how they look like, to do an and typical or to do a request for a customer, where we um, show you with a couple of your customer pictures uh, how the mounting solution will look like. Um, yeah, for all of you who want to attend next week's mounting session, um, next week we are gonna talking about. Um, choosing eye gaze mounts for AAC devices to wheelchairs. I will show you next week also a little bit more about the practical installation for eye gaze systems and about how to mount them on a wheelchair. Um, also, if you want to share the presentation or the video, you find the presentation and video, I think, uh, at latest on Wednesday this week, available on YouTube. Um, the presentation as a PDF will be available on the Link AT homepage. Um, yeah, I think as long as there are no other questions on your side, I like to thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to speak today to you. And um, yeah, I wish all of you a wonderful start in the new week and see you next week when we are talking again about um, mounting solutions on our Mounting Monday.